There was a Lutheran pastor who got pulled over. The officer approached the car and said, Sir, have you been drinking? The pastor said, Only water, sir. The officer said, Can I see that bottle laying there on the floor? The pastor goes, Sure. He hands it to the officer. The officer takes it and he unscrews it. He goes, Sir, that's not water. The pastor says, Dang it, he did it again! This morning we're talking about Jesus at the wedding feast in Cana. As I told the kids up here, right, the wedding feast of Jesus' day were not like they are like up for us, right? We have a wedding feast, you have a wedding, you have a party, the party lasts six, four, three, two, somewhere in there, depending on how much money the family wants to spend on it. Wedding feasts in Jesus' day were week long celebrations where people would gather together as a whole community and celebrate for a long time. And here we have Jesus taking water and turning it to wine, the first of six signs in the Gospel of John. How many of you have ever seen a miracle? That's what I thought. How many of you believe Jesus turned water into wine. Really? You believe that? In the Gospel of John, there are seven signs. Jesus does no miracles. There are seven signs. The first of the seven is Jesus turning water into wine. The second is the healing of the officer's son. The third is the healing of the man at the pool. The fourth is the feeding of the 5,000. The fifth is Jesus walking on water. The sixth is Jesus healing a paralytic's hand, I believe. And the seven. Thank you. I was like, where am I at? I thought I was on five, but I know I'm on the last one, so I should be at seven. The seventh one is Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So we have wine, healing, healing, walking, food, bread, Healing, healing, or healing, raising, right? We have four healing miracles and then three others thrown in there for better measure. But they're all signs. And do you actually believe that these things happen without seeing them? A lot of, I do. I'm not, and I'm just, I'm just asking, right? I believe that these things happen because it's written here. I don't have to see them to believe it. But how many times do we have to see things in order to believe them? Right? We want to see it, like that catch last night. Did you see that? <laughs> if you didn't see that, you might just be like, well, that didn't actually happen. Sometimes you don't believe things if you don't see them. Right? The Statue of Liberty was made to disappear by David Copperfield. Did the Statue of Liberty actually disappear? No. But people saw that it wasn't there. So seeing isn't necessarily believing. Jesus turns this water into wine. He takes an ordinary substance that's put into six jars. And how many days of the week are there? Seven. How many days are we supposed to work? Six. According to the law. Six. How many jars were there? Six. How many days did the did the Jew did the Israelites collect manna in the wilderness? Six. Coincidence? I think not. But we all have this conception and idea of who God is, right? Can you hear me? Yeah. We all have this conception and idea of who God is. And it fits into this nice neat, nice, neat little package. So I'm wondering exactly how big is your package? Or exactly how big is your box? Is it this big? Will everything that God needs to do fit in here? Will the understanding of who God is and what God wants to do in our life fit into this box? Is this box big enough for you? Anybody want to? Anybody want to take this box? Anybody? 
So if that box is, and is that box too big? No, I got a couple people shaking their head like this. You're allowed to say yes or no here. It's okay. <laughs> is that box too big? No. no. Okay, so let's try it. How about this one? Is this one better? Is this one big enough? No. No? Okay, well, we'll put this one over here too then. So that one's not big enough. That one's got a packing list in it, I guess. It says it on the top. What about this one? Oh, then now I got now I'm cooking. So this one's big enough for somebody over here. Is this big enough? Can everything that God needs to do in your life fit inside this box? Can God fit inside this box? Because that's what we do when we say, Well, I don't believe that Jesus turned water into wine. I don't believe that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I don't believe that Jesus healed anybody. Right? It won't fit in the box. Well, if that box is still maybe a little, I got one person over here that's okay with that, but we'll talk later. <laughs> if that box isn't big enough, how about this box? Is this box big enough? Actually, some of the people in this room would fit in this box. <laughs> Would it be big enough then? Would it? No, I don't think it would. I don't think that this box, even all four of those boxes, would contain what God has for us. And that's what happens when we say, well, I don't believe in miracles, right? I can read all the stuff in the Bible and I can see that it happened then, but none of that stuff happens today. I have questions for you. How many of you have ever... Witness a birth. And how many of you, when I asked earlier, have you seen a miracle? Raise your hand. None of you. How many of you have ever seen somebody healed by a surgery or some kind of procedure? And, and none of you raised your hand when I asked if you've seen a miracle. How many, of you, have you, how many of you have ever seen the grass sprout and the flowers come back every spring? Everybody needs to raise their hand on that one. And nobody raised their hand earlier when I said, have you seen a miracle? We expect these miracles to be big, huge things. Like Jesus taking water and turning it into wine in six jars that are meant for ceremonial ritual cleansing. Six days of the week, seventh day you rest, six days they collected manna. But we expect that to be the miracle, right? Something big, something huge, something that nobody would ever expect. <coughs> and yes, you have to acknowledge here that sometimes things don't go the way we want them to and we don't get the miracle that we ask for, right? And we could talk about that for days. But that is in that belief and trust that the things that happen are because God needs them to happen in a certain way. Not that God makes bad things happen. But that God is always there in and through everything that happens in our lives. So the miracles that we seek are not necessarily Jesus turning water into wine. Jesus walking on the water. Jesus taking five loaves of bread and two fish. Which, by the way, there's only two times that the word for fill is used in the Gospel of John. The word that's used in John chapter 2 where... Jesus tells the servants to go and fill up these six water jars. The other time that that word for fill is used, the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus tells the disciples to go and fill the baskets. Coincidence? I don't believe so. It's not about seeing the water to wine, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walking on the water, because every one of you walked on water in here this morning. And thankfully, none of you fell. It's not about seeing the miracle healings. It's about looking out into the world and seeing all of the miracles that happen around us each and every day and knowing that God is with us. 
and walking with us and moving with us in this world. There's a wonderful song out there. If you haven't heard it, I want every one of you to go and find it this week and listen to it. It's a song by Natalie Grant. It's called Be One. And the chorus of this song says, why are we waiting for a miracle to happen? You need to go and be one. Because God is moving in and through each and every one of you. And when we try to fit him into one of these boxes and keep him into the little space that we think he's going to fit in, it's not going to work. But if we allow him to have control and reign over all of our lives and to move in us the way that he's ordained and the way that he's designed, then things are going to happen. And you, my friend, are going to be a miracle to somebody in this world. You are going to be the impetus and the the purpose of something great happening in their lives, be that a small thing of holding a door open and smiling at somebody who's having a really bad day or helping somebody change a tire or pulling somebody out of a ditch. It doesn't matter. You can make a difference in the world just by allowing God to shine through you. So don't be waiting for something huge to happen. Go and be something small in the world so that God's love is proclaimed in everything that you do. Allowing Him to shine so that His love is always made known.